Welcome to molar volume. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how we can determine the volume of a gas, as well as how much space one mole of a gas actually takes up. Let's start by talking about one of the scientists that did a lot of work with gases and determining relationships with gases. In the early 1800s, there's a scientist named Amadeo Avogadro. And Avogadro was exploring the relationship between the masses of different gases that had the same volume. So to get an idea of what he was talking about, let's represent that. Here we have three boxes, and they all have the same volume. It's also important to mention that these boxes that all have the same volume are kept at the same pressure and the same temperature. The reason for that is that pressure and temperature have a huge impact on the behavior of gases. And we actually have an established set of conditions to represent a standard temperature and pressure. That way, if we define the conditions of an experiment being at STP, or standard temperature and pressure, anyone in any place will know that that means that the temperature is zero degrees, or 273 Kelvin, and the pressure is at 101.3 kilopascals, or one atmosphere of pressure. So for our three boxes here, let's say that they are at STP. Now remember, we said he was exploring the relationship between the masses of different gases. So let's put some different gases into each one of these boxes. In the first box, we'll put hydrogen gas. In the second box, we'll put oxygen gas. And in the third box, let's put carbon dioxide. So now we have three boxes with different gases in them. So Avogadro discovers putting these three different gases into boxes of the same volume at the same temperature and pressure that they all have the same number of molecules present. So for example, in the first box of hydrogen, we find three molecules of hydrogen gas. In the second box with oxygen, we find three molecules of oxygen gas. And in the last box with carbon dioxide, as you may guess, we find three molecules of carbon dioxide. So we can make a number of observations on this scenario. The first is that we have equal volumes of gases because the containers are all equal volume. And in these equal volumes of gases, we have an equal number of particles. But what's not the same? Well, first of all, we have different substances. The first box has hydrogen, the second box has oxygen, and the third box has carbon dioxide. The size of each particle, the size of the different particles, are different. Okay, the particles of carbon dioxide are larger than that of oxygen are larger than that of hydrogen. And lastly, the masses are different. Each molecule of hydrogen gas is 2 AMU. Each molecule of oxygen gas is 32 AMU. And each molecule of carbon dioxide is 44 AMU. So you can see that the total mass of the first box would be different than the total mass of the second box, which would be different than the total mass of the third box. And this mass component is important because that's what Avogadro was actually looking at. He was examining the relationship between the masses of different gases of the same volume. So Avogadro comes up with a hypothesis that we call Avogadro's hypothesis or Avogadro's law. They can be used interchangeably. And it says that for gases, only gases, not solids or liquids, for gases, equal volumes of different gases contain the same number of particles. And this is a huge idea. Equal volumes of different gases contain the same number of particles. This tells us that the number of particles in a given sample of gas only depends on the volume of that gas, not on the size of the particles, or the type of particles, or the mass of the particles. It only depends on the volume. And this gives us a very neat relationship that we can use. At STP, at standard temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas, which is the same as saying 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of any gas, occupies 22.4 liters of space. So one mole of any gas at STP has a volume of 22.4 liters. And we call this 
the molar volume. Remember, this is only for gases, and it's only true at STP, at those conditions, the standard temperature and pressure. One mole equals 22.4 liters. That wraps up our lesson on molar volume. Any questions you have from this lesson, write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class.